like most people, I, I grew up watching MacGyver. Um, it was it was an amazing. Show. like Canadians, but we're Minnesotans. Um, wait a minute. Uh, how many speak English here and understand? Yeah. And, and, and I will do a brief translation. Yes, please. Um, and we, growing up, my dad, we didn't have a lot of money. It's a sad story. It's not really. But um, we built things, or I mean, we fixed things if they got broken in our family. It just made more sense. So I grew up with that mentality or that family credo. I mean, if it's broken, fix it. If you can't, you know, fix it anyway. But um, so, yeah, when MacGyver came along, I didn't know it until maybe mid, the, uh, the middle of the first season, that they had cast the right guy. Because I'm curious about solutions to things. I'm an idiot when it comes to mathematics and physics and all that stuff, but I'm fascinated by it. Um, I observe everything I can, and I take it all in. The older I get, the more I forget, so there's more room. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, Prior to MacGyver and since then, um, I've gotten a little sharper in my observations, even though I'm getting older. To toothpaste? Du dentifrice? Du what? Du champagne? That's... Quelle bande d'alcoolique? <laughs> c'est chiant qu'il y a juste un pôle, c'est juste du café, et c'est où le bar? So Champ everyone's wanting... Champagne and bottle beer. Make beer. sure you don't drink the gold. That would... Oh, Make sure you don't drink the gold. Uh, you, can I change gold? Uh, gold is soft and not not really. Money though, Richard. Well, money. Yeah, I'm assuming that the world is coming to an end and we have five fingers left. <laughs> you with me on this, folks? <laughs> um, one that I re one of the great things about doing MacGyver when I was much younger. Was that I could do my stunts and do all the activity and stuff. Not all the stunts I qualify, but most of them. Um, so any episode you see where there's, let's say, skiing, I was able to do all my own skiing. Um, they drew the. There was an episode at the beginning of an episode where I'm on horseback and a helicopter comes down and. I take this big hook that they've dropped and put it onto the saddle and the helicopter flies off with me and the, and the uh, horse. 
they only let, I, I did all my riding and the helicopter comes down and they take the hook and they start to put it on, they say cut. And I, I freak out. It's at that point that they get the stunt man in and he gets to fly away with the horse. Not old Ricky, nah. I, I have, I've had this, I've been asked the question about uh, uh, regenerating the MacGyver franchise. And it's not an unattractive thought in my retired mind, because uh, if anyone would be interested in really running with the concept of MacGyver as a very old man, who is maybe a little shaky, taking apart a bomb or whatever he's doing. Um, I think there's a lot of humor to be had um, out of that. Not at the expense of elderly folks, because I am one. Uh, I think that would, that would be worth exploring at some point, but it's so much work and I'm so lazy, so. It opened, it opened my uh, avenues for entertainment in that, um, and in education and fantasy, in that I wasn't a fan of uh, science fiction um, with, before I started, before I got the role of Jack. Um, and once I got more involved in the production end of it and seeing how the machinery worked uh, on a technical level, then I really started to take it, uh, take an interest in the in the genre, if you will, um, because as we're finding out, as time marches on and more and more franchises or films um, come along, uh, this, there's no limit to what the, the film industry can bring. Um, and I've always felt, in general, that um, if you've got a, an imagination, you you've got everything. Um, but what I took away from uh, the experience was just that I have a greater respect for um, science fiction and uh, the production thereof. So uh, there's nothing too deep about um, that I've taken away from all the writings and that the writers and the other producers because the writers and the creators of the of the text and of the storylines, they're the ones that do the work, and I just I couldn't keep up with those guys. I mean, they're I, I, my brain doesn't think in the terms of that uh, of those realms and storytelling. I love, but that's you know you got to keep people's attention when it comes to um, well entertainment basically. Just want to wind up my. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it's just, for one thing, I'd never been in anything, uh, performed or produced anything uh, like a science fiction project, and so there was a guy that worked that was a, Mac, a MacGyver administrator. He had moved to MGM and. Um, they owned the rights to uh, Stargate. And the movie had already been made and they were gonna make it into a series. The guy's name is John Sines. Um, he called me and said, I want you to do this. Yeah, this is for you. He sent me a copy of the film. I watched it it's pretty fast. I mean, it was cool. And, but he wanted me to play Jack O'Neill. And I said, well, if, if you all remember what Kurt Russell looked like, I said, you know, my hair won't do that. <laughs> it just won't. Blonde crew cut. It's just, well, it is what it is. Um, so he sent me that in the script. And I, I kind of, there was a comfort zone in there. I saw some things that I could do with it if they're willing to trust me that it would be okay eventually. Uh, because my take on Jack O'Neill was far less regimented than the um, old uh, crew cut guy. Um, so it was as simple as that. I mean, I just, um, I don't know what to say about it. I mean, I just, I just jumped on board right away.
There was more to your question than that, though. First of all, thank you for receiving me once again into your lovely country. And for those of you who aren't from this country, you too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, For anybody, who's been, for anybody who's been standing in line to get a, a signature from me, I apologize from my knees. I'm so sorry it takes so long. But tough, because <laughs> I like spending at least an eye contact's worth of time connecting, rather than, and I'll say it, the William Shatner uh, style of head down, you know, sign next kind of thing. I can't do that. So it takes time for me to say hello to folks and then, and if there's a dog involved, forget it, you can all go home. <laughs> um, and kids, too, I, lo I love kind of chatting with kids. But anyway, thank you for waiting the long lines and um, I understand if you just, you know, walk away. <laughs> it's, it's too long to wait. I'll try and speed things up uh, for the rest of the night. But um, thank you for, 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 again, having me back. I like you. Anybody want a chocolate egg?